a discovery that could revolutionise the treatment of chronic back pain, helping millions of sufferers worldwide. Instead of undergoing surgery or enduring years of painkillers and sleepless nights, doctors may be able to relieve some of the very worst cases of back pain simply by prescribing a course of antibiotics. New research shows that some back pain is caused by a bacterial infection of a damaged disc. Now, the discs in our backs don't have their own blood supply, so if you slip a disc, as in it bulges out of shape or it herniates, then your body responds by creating a blood supply to that specific damaged area so that the repairs can take place. Now, the blood supply provides a perfect pathway for bacteria to get to the disc and start wreaking havoc, which results in chronic back pain. Dr. Hannah Albert from the University of Southern Denmark says treating the infection with antibiotics is the key to getting lasting pain relief. This is a treatment for the people who have the most severe low back pain, the people who have motor changes in their, in their vertebrae, people who are in pain constantly, more or less, it varies during the day and it's you know, really bad in the night. And to be able to help these people with antibiotics to kill the infection that they have in the disc, that is a brand new concept of treatment. And the symptoms there, you said m modic back pain, what are they? Are they very, very specific? Yeah, in many ways they're pretty specific. Um, one of the things that is really characteristic is that when you do exercise, you become worse. You have constant pain. It varies during the day, it's worse in the morning, best during the middle of the day, worse in the evening. And 70% of them have pain during the night. You know, when they turn over at night, it is so painful that they are awoken. Can you imagine a life like that, you know? And um, th so these are, these are the three most characteristic things. There are others, you know, when you examine these people, they have the tests we do on them, which are also um, uh, positive, as we say. What is the actual treatment that you have used and have found to be effective? We have given these people a special antibiotic, so it was prescribed to us from uh, some microbiologists who saw the bacteria flora which were in the nucleus material, which people with disc herniation have, or with what you call a slip disc. And this antibiotic is really good at killing these bacteria which are in the disc. And you give it for 100 days and you give a very high dose. And how many people have you actually treated like this so far? Well, you know, we have treated in different kinds of um, uh, scientific protocols. We have treated about 250, but all in all, with the people we treated on the centre, we have treated, I have think, about uh, 500, I would think. And what sort of success rate have you had? If we give them a double dose, uh, as we did in the clinical control trial, we have an success rate of 80%. 80%? That is yes. phenomenally high. It is, and it's really astonishing because uh, these people are the most, as I said before, the most severe affected people. And we're talking here about a whole new way of thinking about back pain because it's inflammation as a result of bacteria somehow getting into that lumbar area, getting in, is it into the disc or into the bone? It's into the disc. When you have a slipped disc, you, you get uh, the way that you cure yourself is that you get a brand new capillary system. It, it lies on the outside of the disc herniate, the herniated disc which slips out, and it also grows into the nucleus material. In this capillary system, you have what you call macrophages. It is white blood cells, and they dissolve the nucleus material. So that's a really good situation. The bad thing is that when you brush your teeth, you have in your mouth bacteria called probiotic acne. And if we have a blood sample taken 10 minutes after we brush our teeth, we all have bacteria from our mouth in our blood. And it doesn't matter how gentle you brush your teeth. These bacteria, probiotic acne, are really strange bacteria. They, they hate oxygen. And they are very slow, you know, they are, oh, do I want to breathe today? Oh, no, I can't really be bothered. But the key thing is that the, the disc 
doesn't have any blood vessels in it. The, it doesn't have any oxygen at all. And when these bacteria come into this brand new capillary system, they think, mm, this is paradise. The disc doesn't have any oxygen. I hate oxygen. There's no competition from other bacteria. And it's like, there's almost a sign saying, welcome to paradise. <laughs> and these bacteria, they, they enter the disc and then they have a very a bad um, residue from their metabolism. It's called probionic acid. And the probionic acid comes into the bone. It's like, you know, like if you have a splinter in your finger, you have this yellow stuff, but you always always have this edema around it. So the, the thing that happens in, in the bone is that you have a bone edema. And that consists of micro fractures of the bone and ingrowth of new pain fibers. And that's why it's so painful. You can imagine if you had micro fractures in your bone and somebody asked you to do exercise, you know, <laughs> wouldn't you get that? Of course, it would hurt more. So it's very natural that this um, pain from exercises happen in this group. And it's really important to understand that this is a subgroup of patients. You know, the far, far majority of back pain patients, they should have do their exercises. They should do their inner core training, the Pilates, whatever they do to keep in good shape. You know, it's like, you know, when we go into the garden and we dig our garden in the spring and do other silly things, we get back pain and it's gone after three weeks when we do exercises. This is not the group that's going to get antibiotic. The group that gets antibiotic is the one with a previous disc herniation and pre present modic changes. Right, so you can very, you can diagnose this very specifically. Very I'm interested to know this bacteria though, this this pro, pro propione bacteria. Um, yeah. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly here. <laughs> can you say Probiona acne? Probiona acne. Where yeah. is that normally feeding in our bodies? Where does that normally reside? Well, as I told you before, it hates oxygen. So it is two places in our body, in the hair follicles in the really far down in the bottom of the hair follicles. And that's why I sometimes give pimples, you know, because it gives acne. And that's how it was all first discovered. And the other place it is in our body is in our mouth. Not like in the inside middle of the mouth, that's where we breathe, and so that has a lot of oxygen. But in our, in our gums, on our gums, in the side, in, inside our cheeks, and in the mucosus membrane, there you have the, the, the probionic acne, and that is the two places that you find it in the body. So today, how many people would suffer this type of modic back pain, the specific symptoms that you were able to treat? Well, we, we, know, we don't know how many exactly of the ones that we'll be able to treat, but we know how many people have modic changes, and that is 6% of the population, and this is huge studies has been done in Denmark, in Finland, and in southern China. So 6% of the population have motor changes, and I think that we can treat a fair part of them. But not all are in relation to previous disc herniation. But if you go to a, like a secondary center, like a spine center, so forth, 40% of the people who come there have motor changes because it's been very difficult to treat them out in the, you know, in the primary sector with the normal doctors and and uh, a physiotherapist and so on. And if you look go to the social office, and then you see how many people are the ones who get disability pension from low back pain, and that is the second biggest group of people. The second biggest group. 70% of these people have motor changes. So when we get to cure these people, the benefit for all of us would be that we pay less in tax, but the benefit for these people would, would be that they don't have to go on disability pension, but they can live a life like the rest of us and enjoy all the things that we enjoy and not be in the prison that their body is for them. The treatment side of things, though, 100 days on antibiotics, I can hear people saying, you know, oh, that's, a, that's terrible because we're already hearing about sort of antimicrobial resistance and the, yeah. the, the rise of the superbug and how, you know, the, the communities dosing themselves up with antibiotics is a bad thing for the long-term health outcomes of our communities. What we're all afraid of is the superbug. We're all afraid of resistance. 
but most people don't understand how the systems occur. And I'm just going to explain to you, because you will never, ever have resistance in motor change people because this is not a contagious disease. Like, the, the, the resistance developed, like, let's go to, we have a hospital, a, people have had, a person has had an operation, and they get an infection in their wound. And then they have some antibiotics, and it heals, yeah, yeah, but, you know, and then they get another antibiotics. And then, you know, things happened, and somehow it's transported by the nurse or whatever sheets or something to the next patient and they get infected by the worst bacteria of the ones from the last patient and then another patient get infected and it's always the toughest the cleverest one who who survive in the end after a long 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 contamination from one to another we develop a super bug but in this disease, this will never happen because you contaminate yourself and then it stops. You know, I would, uh, you know, I would rub my naked back onto a motor patient's naked back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand the fact. Looking man, but, <laughs> you, know, you know, seriously, it, you know, you cannot contaminate me with the disease, uh, with a motor change bacteria because you have it from your mouth and you put it into your back and end of the story. So you don't develop super bugs. So when you talk about resistance, you have to look at under which circumstances do you give antibiotics. And in this one, we do not have that danger. What about the fact though that you are taking such a long course of antibiotics and the impact that could have on your gut flora and as we're finding out the gut is such an important part of our body you know and that there is a lot happening there well as you have discovered that bacteria have actually caused back pain I mean this is sort of the new frontier isn't it there could be so many other sort of inflammatory and, and chronic pain diseases that result from bacteria opposed to maybe other causes that we are treating today. Yeah, I, I fully agree that that is a problem with the gut flora and we advise all our patients to take these special tablets that you get at the pharmacy where you replace the good gut flora. And yes, you, you cannot do anything, you, you know, when you do something, there's always a side effect. And you know, look at the alternative that this person has. Do you want your gut flora destroyed and get some other pills to replace it or do you want to stay in bed don't go to work can't play with your children can't drive a car you have to lie on the back seat so if if, if you put that choice to the people i tell you i have not had one single motor change person patient who said no thank you because a chance of getting their own life back i just finally uh hannah what are the the, the sort of the back surgeons make of this because uh, this is fairly, I imagine, it's fairly challenging findings for them. I, I, I had feared the back surgeons, but I have been very positively um, received by them because a lot of them know that some of their surgery that they do fail. And I think that a lot of them have been thinking, hmm, have I been doing surgery on something that should have an antibiotic treatment? So I think that uh, the positive receive, receiving that, that I've received, the, sorry, the positive receive that I've got is, is due to the fact that they understand that, that there's more diseases in the back than we think of. And maybe in the future I can operate on a specific group that will be helped by the operation and another group that will not be helped I could, you know, treat with antibiotics. Because what you also must think of is that when you have motor changes, the bone is not very good. It's micro fractures. And then to put in uh, metal things to screw tight to do this and this, a lot of time these things are loose afterwards. And naturally, if you put um, metal things into a, what can we say, semi-rotten, it's not rotten, but it's, it's not very good structure, then naturally it loosens up afterwards. So I think that, um, I think some of them, or a lot of them would think of this as a help. Do you think that in the future we're going to discover that bacteria and the resulting inflammation are a cause of lots of other yeah. 
chronic pain syndromes and chronic pain diseases that we suffer today? When, when I am in my philosophical corner, I try to think of what has happened, you know, through medicine over the last 60 and 70 years. And, you know, earlier on, the big killer was uh, infections. You know, if you had, you were on the farm and you had a, a pneumonia, people died. If they had meningitis, they died. If they had an infected wound, you know, they could lose their arm or they could die. And then penicillin came in the early 40s and it revolutionized the world. And now we have all kind of lifestyle diseases, cardiovascular diseases, cancer and so forth and AIDS and, and God knows what. And we are trying to we are figuring out better and better cures for all these diseases. And I think that we have forgotten. We thought that we conquered the infectious diseases with penicillin. But I think that we have these lurking, what you call low virulent, you know, infection and bacteria who are lurking in dark little places in our body and giving us different kinds of diseases. And we, you know, a lot of unexplanatory diseases I think it comes from low violent infection, but um, that's what I'm going to work on now. <laughs> Cheers, Dr. Hannah Albert from the University of Southern Denmark. Now, this is only at a research stage, so very limited numbers of people have tried this treatment. But surely if it does work, then it's going to be more widely available.